What's up, everybody? How you doing? This is Chris Drummond from Progressive Action. I ain't know if there was some technical difficulties or not. It might be te technical difficulties right now, but I'm just going to do this live as if everyone's watching. But let me say this before I uh, move forward. In 2001, when I lost the election, I was devastated. 2021, excuse me, the 2021 election. I don't like to lose. I don't think there's anybody that likes to lose. And more than that, I believed I was going to win. So when I lost, giving up conducted chair and other things to run for VP, because I didn't think that Canelo Gomez was fit to be a VP. And I don't think he's fit to be VP now. It proved me, I was proved right. So, um, for all you who supported him over me, there you go. That's my ego speaking. You know, I was, you know, I didn't feel good about it. And I was upset for months. Months, maybe a year. But I prayed on it. And every time I prayed in my life, that was in any type of discomfort. Um, had any type of trepidation on things. I always, you know, pray and gave it to Jehovah, gave it to God. And a few weeks ago, now people say God talks to you. They can hear God's voice. You know, God spoke directly to them. I think God speaks to us, but I don't know we all know when he's talking to us or we can understand his blessings or his signs uh you know sometimes god t tells us to go left and we go right i didn't see a burning bush or no james earl jones or morgan freeman hear that type voice coming to my head but i did feel like i got this he told me that it's not important that you run for any position in the union. It's not important. You did, you know, you did the best you can. You was authentic. You cared about the membership. You cared about your brothers and sisters. And the folks know out there who I am. I get calls every day. They refuse to deal with the union. But the folks know who I am. And I hope everybody know who I am. But I'm at peace with not running. I'm at peace with anything. The union, please do what you want to do with me. Because I'm going to do what I have to do with you. Let's go. This ain't an act. You all violated these members in every way. My brothers and sisters. You tried to disrespect me in every way. You tried to take something that was very important to me. Attempt it. And helping my brothers and sisters. My unionism. My love, care, and compassion for my brothers and sisters. But I'm at peace now. When you feel that peace, Jehovah does that. He gives you peace. You don't fear nothing. You're ready to do what you have to do for you and your family and others. But I'm at peace now. So in that note, on that note. I don't fear anybody. I don't care about the Richie Davies, Davies of the world. I don't care about anybody at Transit. Anyone who's trying to impose their will and their doctrine on my brothers and sisters. So that being said, and this I'm gonna talk about some of these slates running. After and that means two, these so called activists, these so called folks, in addition to the union, you who pretend that you care about the membership, you phone these six months going into the election. Now you want to fight. Now you've been here 25, 30 years, 15 years, and did nothing. I won't say you did nothing, but you was not concerned with our brothers and sisters down here. That wasn't your priority. And if you fight for our brothers and sisters, 
The members is your poverty. Your members actually are because nobody, the members, our brothers don't care what's going on in your family. They don't care what's going on in your life. You are tasked into dedicating your life to your brothers and sisters, and that's not happening. But let's talk. I just wanted to say that, that I'm good and I'm ready to fight. I'm ready. And there's no power. There's nobody except for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and Jehovah. That I'm beholden to. I bow down for no one. No institution. But let's go. Let's get to some of these things we need to talk about. Yesterday. You know we had that shooting on the A train. Yet another. Act of violence. On the transit system. Right. And I went to the union website. And in the website. This. These manipulators, MTA and the union, want to control your mind. Transit wants you to be dedicated to working for them until you die. Transit, that's why the dual employment thing. Transit don't want you to have a life. They want you to be dedicated to them. They want transit, the MTA, to be your God. And to a lot of us down here, it is their God. And money is their tool to control you. The union, their tool is propaganda, manipulation. Their access to people who to write copy, their PR machine, if you could call it that. Whoever advised them to do that picture should be fired. Whoever thought that was a good idea. It was embarrassing. But the union wants to control you too. They also, you just saw that edict, don't, like Tremel said, and Vince Dean spoke about, don't use their um, logo. But this was a temp that, you know, it has some mumbo jumbo about the bylaws. I've been reading that a lot in the Constitution. You're clowns. You're a clown. Dennis Angle, you are a clown, you pathetic lawyer that you are. But bring it. I want you all. I invite that. Bring it. I don't care. Trust me, it ain't going to stop my fight one bit. I didn't care about the money. Never did. Y'all know that. So there you go. Y'all have no, there was nothing. Incent- I was not incentivized or motivated to ever kiss your ring. Ever. But let's talk about these folks who try to control you. The union. Try to pretend. To sp- you know, they disguise they're in disguise. They're sheep's, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. That's what this union is. But they use their website. Let me read what they put on the website yesterday after this, after the shooting. Another tragic shooting has occurred within the subway system. Gunfire broke out aboard a northbound A train in the conductor's car. Thankfully, the crew emerged physically unharmed from the ordeal. Upon learning of the incident, Division Chair John Luke Rodriguez, along with Union Representative Ernest Boyce and Denise Long, immediately respond uh, immediately mobilized response efforts. Now, what this is right now, the the the, the um elections coming up. So they want to say we're working, we're there, we're on top of it. We was there, we was we. We, we we just we was we, we struck we we was we had our response unit our emergency response our union our our, and our officers are on their job. Let me finish reading it. Currently, the train crew is receiving medical attention at the hospital, accompanied by Chair Brian Davis. I would never mention Brian Davis again. Brian Davis is six foot something. Almost 300 pounds if he's not 300 pounds. He was, he's the most pathetic union rep if there ever was a union rep. Rep. If there ever was a pathetic one. Other than another one I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a name later. Because he was there at Bedford Park. And the only reason I could come up with he didn't stop it. He was part of it. But here you got, you got your, yeah, and that's your job. Melendez will stop Eric and Jesse from getting into anything. 
I'm sure there's people, what's up, brother? I'm sure there's people who are always there to make sure that even Richie Davis, not to get into anything. Tiarello smooth and calm, he know better. JP know better. Kelly get upset, he knows better. And if he didn't know better, Tank, Steptoe, Nicola, Nicolette Brown, they would stop. Same thing with, and she wouldn't. Sis and CD, I forget the name. Shirley Martin. Joyce will stop her. All these officers know you don't even have to tell them. It's like breathing that you don't let your VP get into anything. You're the buffer. Especially somebody like him. Somebody as volatile and the mostly immature as he is. What's up, brother? And Brian Davis did nothing. He should have been sent back to his two. Never, he's, he's a disgrace to unionism. And everybody in the union knows what I'm saying is 100% true. But let me start from the beginning. I digress a little bit. Currently, the train crew is receiving medical attention at the hospital, accompanied by Vice Chair Brian Davis and union rep Ernest Boyce. VP Canelo Gomez has consulted with both the NYPD and the MTA management to gather essential details and is headed to the hospital, hoping to piece together the events leading up to the trouble. Oh, he's Dick Tracy now? He put that, I, I read they said, yo, I'm trying to put the piece together. He's CSI? Somebody gave him his junior G badge from the, G badge from the FBI? He's piecing together. Oh, he's on it. He's on it. Our members understand the system better than anyone, emphasized Richard Davis. We need to enhance our collaboration with law enforcement moving forward. Tell us something we don't know. RTL President Canelo Gomez, another plug, this for the election, asserts all law enforcement resources should be deployed on the platform and in front of the conductor cabs. And there's a photo. And, 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 so so it should be deployed. That's what we're saying. But they should be saying, I thought they was having meetings. We know this. Say that to Davy. Talk to the mayor and governor, but we'll get to that. So, and, and there's a photo there of, of, of Canelo with the conductor. You could put this photo, it's almost like they're trying to do an action movie. But that's part of their manipulating. Canelo's on his job. The union's on the job. All the officers are on their job. And I remember during the election, we was talking about, I was talking about the election. Uh, y'all not, I don't know if y'all remember. He said, folks are always talking about what they do. He said, uh, um, bragging about the jobs they're doing. But like he said, this dude, that's your job. That's what he said to me. He was talking about me. But that's your job. We don't know. We want to know that the crew's okay. But that's your job. All the folks you mentioned, and they ain't no bad folks. All the folks that he mentioned, that they mentioned in the TW Local 100, that's their job to be at the hospital. What's up, brother? That's their job to react in a crisis situation. So do your jobs. This is yet another one of a million photo ops, and you can be sure. He takes photos, not because he's working. He wants to use the imagery, the visuals, to manipulate us. That's what the who's taking more pictures than Canelo Gomez. Who is always say, I'm working. It's about the work. You've done nothing for us. You said you was gonna stop discipline. You all you did was get disciplined. You said you was gonna be transparent. You wasn't transparent about the Corvell Corporation. You wasn't transparent about uh, um, um, station agents and God bless your brothers and sisters. Y'all deserve everything that they, for the first time in the history of this company, were going to be making more than conductors who have to be track certified to get on them tracks. Conductors who have a very unique, safety sensitive job. So you wasn't transparent about that. You wasn't transparent about the con. You wasn't even transparent about what occurred at Bedford Park. And again, his brother says it was a fight. It was just a fight. As if he's absorbed as any responsibility as the leader of our department. 
He didn't respect us enough to explain to us about what occurred there. But he did say to management that he did take accountability manager. I shouldn't have, to manager, supervision. I shouldn't have did that. I should know better. I shouldn't have let that happen. That's what he said to management. He didn't, he don't think. Because they think we're stupid, remember? That he had to explain anything to his members, his 8,000 members in RTO. What he did, again, his visual was to take a picture, remember? Dun, 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 dun. He was rocky, remember? This is, this is our leadership, so-called leadership. This is the man that said he was going to stop all the things that he, what has he enacted with that glossy little flyer that he gave out during the election? What has he done? I submit to you, he's the worst VP we have ever had without question. Without question. But let's talk about the imagery, right? Y'all know that y'all saw that picture, that embarrassing picture? Instead of an intelligent op-ed, something that would espouse and explain what we do on a daily basis, how our lives are at risk, our dedication and work ethics in the op-ed to the Daily News, to the Chief, to the New York Times, to AM New York, to any of the papers, they send a meme of Jan Oliva and, and Alvin Bragg. Now, let me show you how disingenuous these frauds are. These despicable, disgusting frauds. Why did, so we got five barrels, five DAs, right? Where was the, the DA of Queens, Melinda Katz? There's no crime in Queens, nothing going on at Parson and Archer. No EDBs at Continental, nothing going on at Sufton. Nobody's getting a saw at Queens Plaza. Nothing going on at Roosevelt. Nothing going on at, at um, 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 Broadway Junction, not Broadway Junction. Um, 103rd, 116th across on the second line. Nothing going on with the E, the F, the, the, the Romeo. Nothing going on in Queens. And what about the DA in Brooklyn? Eric Gonzalez, the one who, who attended the fake symposium that Richard Davis gave to allegedly cover up his alleged domestic violence, he gets this fake symposium in 179. The most dangerous 179. So we got Belinda Cat. I mean, we got a Melinda Katz, DA, Queens. We're talking about 179. We're talking about Queens, and we're talking about the Queens DA, Melinda Katz, one. Ivy Gonzalez, who attended that symposium, that fake symposium. Remember that? So that's Eric Gonzalez. We got the Bronx, Darcel Clark, who let some, who our brother, the, the, the No Jenkins, who I was with the hospital. I stayed with him overnight. I was with him. He almost, he, he almost got, he almost died. He unalived, as the young folks are saying now. She let that culprit go. She let that monster go, that savage go. And then we got the, the, the we got Alvin Bragg. Listen, I'm no fan. Bragg is despicable in my eyes. He's the worst. She's the worst. And we got Michael McMahon in in Staten Island. He's a Democrat. He don't play politics. He don't even seek these endorsements. He's a Democrat. Who's been in Staten Island was his ninety mostly Republican, a Republican enclave, and he's probably the best DA there is. And he don't play that um that game. Yeah, brother, he is. But they all are. So you put him on me, but why didn't he put Melinda Katz? Let's go back to this. Cause they endorsed her. Why did he put? Aaron Gonzalez, because he was endorsed by Schumer. Who the union endorsed? He was endorsed by Letitia James. Who's the union endorsed? Who the union endorsed? 
So he, by proxy, the union endorsed Eric Gonzalez. What about Dorsal Clark? The union endorsed Dorsal Clark, the DA of the Bronx. So who you left with? The only person that they didn't endorse was Brad. As if the city is good. We good. There ain't no crime in Queens. Ain't nothing going on. We ain't getting assaulted. There's more assaults than one. It, it, there's been days where there was more assaults at 179 than there were in the whole system. That's how dangerous 179 is. So we don't got no problems. Somebody got murdered at that part. Now, you remember that? We don't got no problems in Queens. We good. Melinda Katz doing a great job. Brooklyn. We know what's going on in Brooklyn. They had the press conference at Hoy Skimmer. Remember the conductor got pushed on the plot at Hoy Skimmer on. Yo, y'all, y'all forgot. I think was it Queens where our brother got stabbed in the eye? Remember that? Our brother got stabbed in the eye? Yo, oh, there was no um my brother, um my brother, um oh man, I forget. That's my that's my man. Sykes got stabbed in the eye. He can't flag no more. That's Queens too, I think. So Brooklyn, oh, Bronx, ain't nothing going on. That cleaner didn't get punched in the face in the Bronx. I think two cleans got Kelly didn't do no press conference in the Bronx, I believe, where he said he was going to hold prosecutors accountable, but he didn't say Darcel Clark. That was game. So these dudes put up this post, this, this meme. They're going to get at these folks who are disrespecting us, who are not following the rule of law, who are soft on crime. They didn't bring up no judges. What happened to these DAs? Because they in bed with these politicians. They'll be ashamed of themselves. All of a sudden, they couldn't put up, nor the DAs are absolved of their culpability in letting these criminals go. And these judges, name some judges. They could have filled that page up with folks if they wanted to go there. They'll be ashamed of themselves. They'll be ashamed of themselves, but this is the union's manipulation. This is what they do. They want to always convince you that they are doing their jobs. But they they in bed with these politicians like I just read. Of course they are. You know how you know? Because while we was working out there dying during the COVID plague, our lawmakers, our state assembly, counts everybody, they was working home remotely. While we was dying, while we was getting sick, while we was while we was fearful, or we didn't know what was gonna happen to us one day to the next. It was like being in the war, and that's how it is in war. One day you're fighting a battle, the next day you're going. One day you're in the a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, hole with your other soldiers, and your and the next day they're gone. That was the equivalent, the PTSD. What we suffered during this COVID scare. You know what else they got? They couldn't pass no hazard pay. No long hat. They couldn't pay us that hazard pay, that 25 grand. That extra $17, $19 an hour. They couldn't do that. But they could give themselves a $32,000 raise. These folks who was working from home. These folks that was doing absolutely nothing for us. We could sacrifice our lives while they was home and they got paid. Union said nothing. There was no ads for us doing hazard pay. They, they was quiet as a church mouse. But they're this political, they in bed with these politicians. That's why there was no ad with Darcel Clark. So I ain't said a word about Darcel Clark. If 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 Bragg is A, as the worst DA, Darcel Clark is A plus. But they endorsed her. She's in bed with them. All these politicians who they the only thing worse than these criminals is the laws that these politicians that this union support enacted to make it easier for the people that are out to hurt us and the passengers. Get out of jail. They get out of the jail card. It's these politicians. And this union does nothing and pretend. And they put an ad up. Look at Canella. Look at him. Serious face. Vest with a conductor. Look at the meme we sent to the post. We got them. Look. 
Brad is is Dad look at his duties, but Darcel Clark is not. But Eric Gonzalez is not. But Melinda Katz is not. We don't know specifically what judges. Let's know. Let's get the name of these judges and letting folks go. This poor girl at University of Georgia got murdered. Twenty something, I think she's twenty one. Got murdered because one of these judges. Let it go, and they say it was a mix-up with the paperwork. The union ain't say nothing about this. Y'all remember? We got the Democratic-controlled Senate legislature. Control Senate? They control the Senate? They control the Assembly? And we, con and the governor, is a Democrat. And you know what she signed? A bill. For them to get a thirty-two thousand dollar raise, that's what these politics. That's that's who this union is in bed with. They endorse Hochul, in addition to endorsing Darcel Clark and these other district attorneys. And they send they put a picture up of of Alvin Bragg like they're fighting. And Lieber Lieber is a career bureaucrat. He was a bureaucrat in the Koch administration. He was a bureaucrat in the Clinton administration, and he's a bureaucrat in the Hochul administration, as he was. That's who Lieber is. But you got nothing to say. Lieber bought Richie Davy here to run this railroad. They say nothing about Richie Davy. Richie Davy, you see his interview yesterday. He couldn't be more condescending of the union and us. As we, how dare us do a safety stand down because when our brother almost bled out. Mr. Juggler by an inch. How dare we be upset about that? Get on your train. Get on your bus. Get on that platform. Get in your booth. Get in your barn. Get in your tower. Get on them tracks. Do your work. How dare you be concerned about your life? And we already got a short mortality. You take this violence being enacted on us. You take that out of the equation. We already, by every report, by every matrix, we're breathing dirty air. We're underground. Toxic air. It's disease with them rats. That silicone. The break dust. Our life is always shortened. Let's talk about the stress. You think they care about every day? I'm telling you, for me, I got three kids every day. I pray that, I pray every day that they're safe. I pray every day that they're not murdered. The sense of violence going on. I pray every day that no road cop pull my kids over. That's the stress we live with. I take the, nothing to do with the job. Nothing to do with we job. We are pre um deposed to, to high blood pressure, heart disease. We have low mortality rates. That's the stress the all around us that we put up with every day. I'm not even talking about our salaries. Nobody should have to work overtime. Should have to work overtime. We should, but they use that. They will never give us a living wage. Because they don't want, why would they give us a little a living wage? So we can have a life? Why would they give us dual employment? So we can have a life? Damn you, Transit. Yeah. Yeah. This was going on. And we have a union. Why would they care about our life? And the union don't care about our life. That's a fact. Am I lying? So you can pull up all this industry, Canelo Gomez, and there's more coming. You can take all the pictures. Y'all can go uh, um, say anything y'all want about Libra. They had this poster. They was in um this video. Libra's a bum. Something they were saying. They ain't say nothing about Davy. Oh, y'all remember? His de Blasio. And that's a whole different story. His whole term, this union got at de Blasio for crime in the subways. And not putting cops in it. It's 20 times worse now. That's before three folks got murdered on the people's murdered on the on the trains. 
That's before our brother got slashed in his neck. That's before somebody kicked in a uh, sister's cab in the Bronx and the cops didn't do nothing. That's before all these acts of violence, our brother got shot with the BB gun. That's all these acts of violence that are happening now has happened under Adam, Mayor Adams' watch and the union said nothing. And they crucified de Blasio. Is that a coincidence? It's as much coincidence as Darcel Clark, Eric Gonzalez, Melinda's cat, Mel uh, Melinda Katz, Davy. Hoku not being in that ad on the New York Post, you cowards. They think we stupid. But they high and mighty when it comes to Long Island Railroad and Metro North. Oh, let Samson step in. Big brother, big daddy step in. You're not going to mess this up. Let big daddy step in. He got some provocative words to say to the governor, right? There's that little bit, little, little inty binty bit. My new, but all through, all through we went through, you didn't hear nothing. And these, these politicians, these politicians are despicable. I never felt worse about Democrats in my life. And then you got, I, they good, I might need y'all in the American Civil, the Civil Liberties Union, right? Civil Liberties. Then they talking about, oh, you violating their rights. They need housing. They need mental health. You shouldn't have the National Guard there. They the reason we got into this. This the reason we got the kids are like this. Give them, and my mother used to beat the, used to hurt me. I'm glad she did. She used to put it on me. When I threaten all my kids. That they ever lay hands on me, my kids will not be here anymore. I will unalive them. I told them that from day one. I told them that, that they could deal with me or they could deal with the judicial system. That's what I told them. But not stand in the corner. Not I'm gonna have you, 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 you may not be the most well behaved kids, but you will be the best dress. Nah. I didn't go, yeah, if you, if I felt that you were unfair with my kids, if I went to school, yeah, if I was going to advocate for them. If they wasn't doing what they supposed to do, they going to take their medicine. If my kids do anything they ain't supposed to do, they got to answer, they, they got to handle the consequences of their action. I'm not my kid's friend. I love them. They're all men. Uh, they're grown men and women. They're grown. But I don't blur that boundary. And, and folks here, y'all don't want nothing. Y'all don't want, y'all the cops can't. And listen, I ain't no, listen. I've been beat up by the cops. I'm sure a lot of us had. But you know what? I was out there. It was cops and robbers. I took my medicine. Whatever the, the judicial system had for me, I took it. That's a lot of us out here who went and did bids. You did your bid and came home. You paid your debt to society. And if you're doing what you're not supposed to do, pay your debt to society. There's no soft place to land if you're not doing, you're not obeying the law. There's no soft place to land if you're assaulting our brothers and sisters. If you're slashing their necks. If you're splitting on us. If you're stomping on us. So I don't want to hear the American Civil Liberties talk about this is a violation of yesterday. What can Adams do to a point? You have Adam's hands tied at every turn. These folks out here doing what they want. And I understand, I never knock nobody doing the hustle. Because these, these banks, when they, with these interest rates, and all these fees when you're closing homes and all that, and these pharmaceutical companies, who's more crooked than corporate America? So you want to talk about entrepreneurship, I don't knock nobody's hustle. But you don't rob. You don't steal. You don't rape. You don't maim. You don't assault. And then you got the politicians in the city council, Ms. Adams, and these folks saying, no, this is society. We found a way to pay for the bus. 
And if I didn't pay for them, I humbly stepped on the bus and said, ma'am, sir, I miss, can I get on the bus? And sometimes they said no. I had to walk. Sometimes I was too ashamed to ask for a ride. I ain't saying I never snuck on the train, sneaked on the train when I was young. But there was a point I stopped. I didn't go through a gate with all my goddamn kids. Y'all just empowering these kids to do. You, they friends, they can do what they want. And all they got to do is be dressed. They got to just dress nice. Damn your grades. But they got the best, the top line phone. They got the top phone, iPhone, right? I got the best Jordan. They're jiggy. They're fresh. They're looking crisp, right? That's what's important. And these politicians have enabled this behavior. Every method you try to, every way you try to combat crime and this lawless city, they come back. But we know we need more houses. Housing. We know we need more. Now, we know all that. We know we need the breakfast program. We know, so we need all that. Give them raises you took back then. You make sure you all right, and the union makes sure they all right. This is central relationship that the union has with these politicians. But then they won't put up images like on the union website. Like, we're fighting for you. Remember, there's going to, during the um, contract negotiation, they're going to fight tier six. Remember the election? Going into election, you was going to get, tier six was going to get a, 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 a payment. A tier six refund. You was overpaid. They always overpromising and never, but it's all part of their manipulation. That's what they do. That's what they do, but they'll be ashamed of themselves. They'll be ashamed of sure. They crucified the logic. Don't say a goddamn thing to the, the Adams. No, they don't say nothing to Hoku. They ain't say nothing to Como. And let me add this about Como. Como. Stay out the fray. I do think Como wouldn't play. But Como, investigate Como with them nursing homes. Como, you did nothing for us. You're responsible for tier six. With the support of our union, I might add. Como, go. Put him under investigation. You're you're all on Trump. Let's be fair about this. Get on Como. Get on him. People died. And members first. That's like an art. Members first. This team, Stand United, who changed their name to Members first. That's like an arsonist burned down your house saying he just wanted to keep you warm. That's like a car thief saying, I test drive cars for a living. Members first. Y'all believe that? Y'all believe that ludicrous mantra? This union is as for, and they say, Brother, why are you hitting the union? Why are you keep hitting the union? Because they are supposed to be advocating and fighting for us, and they don't. Their principal priority is staying in office. And they prove that every day. Oh, and, and, and members first is like a union press. The T Stan United said members first, change their members first. It's like a union president saying he would die for his members. Why he's allegedly being sued for beating up his girlfriend. That's how preposterous Stand United putting members first. Let me say something else about you. Kenneth Rivera, vice chair, bang members into management. And for me to say that, you all know that's, that's the worst accusation you can levy at anybody. But union officer and Jesse Aguayda knows. I don't know who else knows, but Jesse Aguayda knows. So Ken Rivera and those who dealt with Ken Rivera, I want to ask you something. When y'all spoke with Ken Rivera, did he interrogate you? Because people said, yo, he act like he was interrogating. You know what he was doing? As a union rep, if I talk to one of my brothers and sisters, I got to hear the story. What's going on? I'm help, you know, helping them with the G2. Might have to defend them in the hearing. I want to know what's going on. But there's nothing I can do to make them be 100%. I, I hope that they 100 with me. But there's nothing I can do to compel them to tell me every detail. We work with what we got. You don't put no pressure. You take our brothers at their word. But if you have a union rep who's interrogating you, 
and you feel interrogated, that means he's trying to elicit more information from you to give to management. So if you have that experience with any union rep, they are op, and they're working with management. And I've got a lot of calls about Ken Rivera before I spoke with Suva about him being banging members in. And let, let me say this about the supervisors. They run their mouth. Why do you think them, that nobody was there with Tremel? How did his G2 get leaked? Which this management supervisors, Mr. Kresslow, the actors, folks at Labor Relations, never looked into how his G2 got leaked. A manager did it. Because they pass all G2s around like Frisbee. They mock our G2s. They gossip like little girls. A lot of these managers. So did Ken Rivera think he was going to bang in a member and nobody was going to find out the way they talk? And every union, there's union reps to tell you that this guy go around just talking, and run his mouth all the time. And am I lying? They know I'm telling the truth. But how despicable it is that they won't investigate and, 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 stay, and, and, and oust. If there's an inkling that you got a rep who's working with management and begging, uh, uh, begging members, he should be ousted out the union. We don't have a union like that. Those days are gone. And y'all seeing that with that disingenuous, fraudulent piece they, that the photos they send to New York Post is truth by omission because they omitted Melinda Katz, they omitted Darcel Clark, they omitted Eric Gonzalez. Black Bragg was their Huckleberry, but you supposed to say, yeah, our union's fighting. They ain't doing nothing. Call Davy to the carpet. He says, how dare he say? Had press conference yesterday after he spoke to the the city to the councils. He had a press conference yesterday saying he had to talk. You didn't have nothing to do with the Nash Guards and they had to talk. And there will not be any more walkouts, work stoppage. I made it clear. That's Mr. Davy. And you think Mr. Davy ain't working with them to get rid of Tremel? You think they care what happened to me? I, I wouldn't care. On principle, just on principle, my principle, no members. It, it, as bad as Canelo was, I didn't want them fired. I didn't think the fact that Tremel got the same with a broken leg and all the, 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 the injuries that he had, he got the same discipline that Canelo speaks volumes about how much they want to get rid of Kim, uh, um, um, Tremel. Speaks volumes. Of the union's corruption. They knew the sentence. Everybody know. Ask anybody. They knew what Canelo was going to get months before he went to arbitration. Everybody knew that. So I watched the press conference. With um, Jan Oliva yesterday. And Jan Oliva is nothing but a career bureaucrat. If you want to get at the railroad man. You get at Davy. You get at Davy, not him. If you want to get at policy, he works. Uh, um, um, Libra works at the leisure of the governor. He takes his cues from the governor. I don't think anyone in the union or management wants us to be hurt down there. Is trying to not change. Is not doing anything. What they think is in their power to stop this. But that ain't Libra's function. His career. If you go over his career. Throughout his career. That's not what he is. He don't even pretend to be a railroad man. That's on Richard Davy. And the cops. And what's going on with, the, what's going on with these cops. And what's going on. That's on Adams. He's an ex-cop. By all accounts, he was a good cop, a dedicated cop. He born and raised in a very rough circle. He know what was going on out here. And you're not holding him accountable? And let me say this. I'm all for 
the National Guard. But not at Grand Central. Not at Penn Station. Not at the Statue of Liberty. Not at the Museum of Natural History. Not at any of our landmarks and tourist attractions. We got cops in Times Square. That, 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 that's smoke and mirrors. Send them to uh, 149 for Grand Concourse. Send them to Utica. Send them to Kingsbridge. Any of them stops along the D, the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5, the 6, the A, the B, the C, the D, all us throughout our system. Send them there. Help clean out some trains. Ride some buses. See, what they don't understand is that after COVID, we're not going back. It's been the paradigm shift. And through these liberals, through this, these Democrats who were so anti-police, I'm not saying I'm 100% for it, but they have a job to do. And even folks on the street, you had the job to do? They had the job to do. That's what the term copper robbers. And you know, through the years, like I, like I heard people say, like I said, I never thought I would wait to a cop. I never thought I would say, how you doing? You got cops out here that are 100% professional, but they've been allowed, 3rd Avenue, 149th, they've been allowed, and some of them are just bitter, that they said, yo, shut down defund the police. I would have said allocate resources to after school programs and other things. That wording was really offensive. They don't feel appreciated anyway. That's a whole nother story. Right? But they're not doing what they supposed to be doing for whatever reason. There was a, vi a, a, a video the other day of them letting folks what they do. Letting, if, you, if, you, if you're sneaking through the chain styles and you got a backpack, they grab, they help you. Here, let me grab that for you. Come on. They let folks do the th turnstiles. They're in our quarters a lot longer, way after they eat their lunch. They're on their phone. There's six or seven of them clustered together. If we cluster together, we might get written up. So they're not doing their jobs. And the way they implement things, cops should be on these trains, ride five stops and ride five stops uptown, Five stops downtown. Another five stops uptown. The cops should be on the train all the time. And they talking about, I'll get at that later, a little in a minute, that the cops was right there. They immediately grabbed this guy. Well, the gun, they were, the gun got on the train. The guy, whoever was, shots rang out. They was able to let loose, bust rounds. There was no cops there like that. And they talked about, they keep talking about cameras. Nobody cares. People are live streaming their murders now. Nobody cares about cameras. You need boots on the ground. But how would they understand that? They're not there. They go home at 5 o'clock. Libra rides the train with bodyguards. So does Davy. They don't care about what we go. They don't understand that the world has changed. That we need cops. There came a point when you said you couldn't go to your, your girlfriend, to walk your girlfriend, your husband, your spouse, your son, your daughter, your grandma. You can't walk into the gates in the airports no more. You can't say bye-bye, see later. You can't kiss them before they board the, 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 their flight now. You got TSA all over the places. The airports are secure because the world changed. COVID changed the world just like 911 did. It changed the world. People came out of COVID with a whole different mindset. Where it relates to the buses and the trains. They won't have a beef in a park no more. They will come to the subways. They don't care. You can put a thousand cameras out there. It don't mean nothing. They smile for the cameras. Do y'all understand? We have the population that rides us every day of Connecticut, Arkansas, Vermont.
Kentucky, and they got 5,000 officers for that population. We have the equivalent population riding our trains, and we don't have cops there, and they have to be there. Not for show. What the, if, if National Guard is there, what, what are they there for? Let them be there when we clean our trains. Let them go to some of these terminals. These, these cops have to ride these trains. There should always be somebody on the train. I'm sorry that your this is a whole different. My, I'm sorry this is the way it is, but this is the way it is. We got to take off our shoes at the airport. None of us like it, but that's the way it is. And until they understand that, more incidents, one of us is gonna, one of us is gonna die. They haven't changed one iota since our brother Goebbels got murdered. They haven't changed one iota since the shooting at 36th Street. And people, you would think with the NASCAR, that shooting happened after our brother almost had his head decapitated from his body. They don't, it ain't about the cameras. And I say, when you do the mental health issue, what are you going to do? Okay, you got personnel. You find some, I've been there. We all been there. It takes hours before someone come to pick up some of these folks sometimes. Do you have beds for them? You going to talk to them? You got drive-by mental health services? You close down Creedmoor. You cut beds in Manhattan psychiatric. You change health care as we know it, and this is on your as well, because some of these people should be in an institution. Some of them should be in the institution for the rest of their life. They should be medicated. They should be observed 24 hours. But you know who has that problem? Us. They put that on us. Because all we're supposed to do is get on our train, get on our bus, get in our booth, get on our platform, and do our jobs. Damn what happened to us. It's going to get better. They're going to quote us some more statistics. And the union is saying nothing. They're sending the cartoons to the post. Put photos on their websites. A president lying about he's going to sacrifice his life. He's our savior now. He's our savior now. Richard Davy is our Lord and Savior because he's willing to give his life. Not excuse me, Richard Davis. He's willing to give his life for us. Think about the type of fraud that would utter that statement. Think about the type of disgrace that would say, how would Jan Oliva like if I spit in his face? He didn't say, how would you like if someone spit in your face? How would the governor like for someone to spit in her face? How would Adams like if somebody threw urine or used sanitary napkin in his face? They didn't say that. And they say they militant? What provocative comes out their mouth? And Davy's saying, you don't say nothing. They, they, uh, they assured me that they won't behave as if our president is Charles and we his children or, his, or whatever. We all play in the sandbox. How dare you, Richard Davy? So I watched this press conference yesterday with Chairman Lieber, Richard Davy, and Police Kemper. And let me say this about Police um, Transit Chief Kemper. This is the second time he makes comments as if he's um, Dimitri Kreslow. He, I remember when the, the, the windows got burst out on the end in the W, the W. He was talking about service and service, and, and Richard Crest and, and Demetri Crestler was right there. Why are you making comments? He gets in these press conference like he runs RTO. He gets in these press conference like the police are really on their jobs. And all they do, I don't care if. To, let me read something. Jan Olipa said the commitment that the governor and mayor have made to staff and transit is huge. It's a career bureaucrat. And then he said, yesterday, these cops went the extra step when there was a shooting. They, did, they didn't know what was happening, but as people was rushing up the stairs, they rushed down the stairs and made the immediate, immediate apprehension. 
That's bravery. Yeah, it's bravery, but that's their jobs. That's what they signed up for. That's brave. What about our bravery? What about us coming to work, not knowing that we're going to make it home? What about our bravery? When we got to make sure our passions are set. What about our bravery? When we know we have a union and administration, a union administration, and management that don't have a clue, and cops that ain't there when we need them, sitting on route. Take two aspirins and calls in the morning. The cops are not there. That's bravery. We don't have a gun. We don't have a taser. That's bravery. General Lieber, how about calling your workforce brave? How about that? They doing their job. We don't have, we can't protect ourselves. We don't know what's happening from one day to the next. Every day is atrocity down there. Every day we put our life at risk. And all y'all do is sprout numbers. How about that? That's brave. How about calling us brave? The cops did what they were supposed to do. And there was no cops on the train. Someone still got shot. We don't care if we apprehend. I don't care if somebody's apprehended after I'm dead. We want that. We want preventive medicine. We want you there to pre prevent the crime. Not tell us about the cameras, with the cameras and what they look like after we go on. And again, some of these folks don't care. They pose for the cameras. They streamline their crime. They take pictures. Half these crimes you hear in the news, they putting it on Facebook. Or TikTok. And they keep talking about these cameras. Cameras don't mean nothing. When somebody roll up on you, can it take a second to get it out here? We need cops. We need whatever resources you have to not come and drive. You need to be stationed there. You need to be stationed at these dangerous things, these hubs. You need to be somewhere where you can get somewhere immediately. The days of saying hi and going back and leaving, no. The days of a, 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 a state stage and a dispatcher saying we need police assistance, no. We need you all there. Get that through your heads. That whatever you're doing is not working. That y'all got to take a new approach. Do not apply logic or analytics to the way the subway used to be before COVID and it was crime then. It's a new world. Come to that reality. But maybe they don't have to come to that reality if they think they don't think enough of us. Do your jobs. Get on your trains, your bus, your booth, your barn, your tower, your flag quarters. They don't feel they got to do nothing. Or they don't know what they're doing. It's either they don't care. Don't know or don't care enough. These cops ain't no more. These cops have to be stationed. That's the world we live in. And these Democrats, the city council, the assembly... Better come to that reality as well. We don't need 20 cops on the mezzanine. Talking and key hearing. We don't need them sleeping in our crew rooms. We need them to fortify these subways. Because they have to be fortified. And these but Excuse me. And protect us. What else he say? Every day. I thank the mayor and governor. This Libra. For prioritizing transit safety. Transit crime is only 2% of the crime in New York City. But we 100% terrorized. How about that? He can't help but throw a stat up. He 2%. Oh, little 2%. It ain't that bad. The suspect was immediately apprehended. Not before somebody was shot in the head. Maybe it wouldn't escalate it. Maybe we're gonna pull out the gun if pull out gun if the cops were there. How about that? All they tried to keep saying is that that it's safe. This is a career bureaucrat. I didn't hear what Daddy said. If he said anything.
Libra don't understand what's going on, but Libra did Foy. Oh, his predecessor. That's not their function. That's why they hired Byford. They get railroad men to deal with this. He said it. He said it, that that's not his priority. I get Tremel to play the tape. I called in on show. He said that's not his priority. That's up to lawmakers. And the lawmakers are find a way to blame it on society or the environment. I could dig it. It's bad. We the richest country in the world. Nobody should be suffering. But I grew up with nothing. But my mother raised me to have respect. My mother instilled some principles. She made sure with her seven kids that she took us to the, the kingdom hall. There was going to be some foundation for us. That we would have some semblance of what right and wrong meant. That's not happening today. And I don't care. Right now, when it comes to us. Us. That's not my problem. That's not our problem. And you leave it to these politicians. You leave it to um, the American Civil Liberties is closed down Rackers Island. I won't chime in on that. Um, build some more houses. Um, be patient. And everything will be fine. How dare you check somebody's bag that might, I doubt it, might have an Uzi in there with an extra clip. How dare you? How dare you inconvenience someone who has a box cutter in his pocket looking to cut one of us? How dare you stop anyone for a minute and convenience them? Make this a military state. Well, goddamn, what are we supposed to do? You don't want nothing. And you think criminals, you think dudes, I'm just saying, wicked folks. Because everybody had criminal activity. This government is a criminal enterprise. But you think folks don't read the papers? You think they know criminals don't know? Some of these savages don't know the political climate? The, nobody. I'm telling you, you better, if you're out there doing your dirt, you better know the laws. They know the laws better than we know our rule books and these bulletins. They're on top of all that. They know what's going on. And they know these live a lot of these progressives. And I'm not saying I I I'm right now I don't I'm about protecting us. Whoever protects us, that's who I'm with. Whoever can make sure that we get home to our families, that's who I'm with. That's who I'm riding with. And Darcel Clark is not doing that. And these politicians are not doing that. But it's Alvin Bragg. Alvin Bragg is responsible for everything that ails us. According to transit, not Davy, not Adams, not Hoku. This is where we are, brothers and sisters. This union is so fraudulent and that these, and I wish I didn't have to talk about them. And this you and listen, what they what they did do too is that mean what they sent over there, they're done. With Joe Campbell, not with Joe Campbell, I don't think, but they had done it with Dave, who just wanted um 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 to have some due process where it related to the bottle and 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 and, and Canellas and Brian Davis' assault on Tremel. Still ain't heard nothing from the Tanya Crips. Still ain't heard nothing. They got to me real quick with the, getting rid of drumming. They ain't say nothing. We had a member, a dues paid member, uh, 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 somebody that served our company, an uh, army vet, somebody who enacted laws, helped enact the law with the union to make sure that you could buy back your military time and get out of here quicker. And they put a meme up on him. They put a meme on everybody who, who's Muniz, anybody who offers any voice of support for our brothers and sisters, that Union True Squad. But that looked like that came from them. And if it came from them, that means this union support them during campaign election. They put a threat up there that the union don't play nice. So they need to be investigated. 
We know their hands are dirty. That's Union Truth Squad. That's the Union. That's their handiwork. What the Union's full support, you cowards. You, you, you talk about parents. Is your mother's proud of you? You hide? You, are we, you scared that somebody got... You just threatened the membership. The union don't play nice, right? You were speaking for the union, right? Y'all don't play nice with folks, right? Y'all just li lobby, put the threat out there. With the union support, everybody got... This union is that propaganda machine. But this time, they didn't use it for us. They tried to use it for somebody else. But they stupid. They left their fingerprints. Your day's coming. And let me say this too with the congestion pricing. This is crazy. And when I was an officer, they asked me to go to a protest and support it. I was there. Which I was a bunch of folks there protested. They was in full support. But this is the thing. Okay, they don't want us to. We don't have to. They, don't, they ain't going to give us no easy pass, right? They don't think we're entitled to it, right? But this is what makes us entitled to it. Okay, let's say so we work here. They don't want, we, we, we have to buy a metro car when we get the airplane, right? They already disrespect us with that. We, pay, we have to pay for a metro car when we travel. We got to stand online and buy a metro car like everyone else if we get on that air train. So they already disrespect us in that regard. But congestion prices... Is three reasons why they said they want congestion pricing. One, the environment, emissions. Two, to fund the capital. And three, to make folks ride the, the, the buses and trains. And you know what that means? More labor for us. More work for us. So they was at in the contract negotiation, and this congestion pricing was there. And we was going to get more work? And they said nothing? Yes. Not only are we going to pay a tax, by that I mean by paying the toll, we got to do more work. And this is a labor union. We get more labor and they could negotiate on that fact alone that our membership is going to be overburdened. With the influx of more customers because of your congestion pricing? And they can leverage that during the negotiation? What kind of union we got? Couldn't get us no hazard pay. Nothing. Fighting us tooth and nail. Only thing that 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 they can't get the criminals, but transit can get make sure we get disciplined. Criminals don't get no time. But we discipline that transit, right? They got that right. But the union couldn't negotiate. What kind of folks do we have when as a result of congestion pricing, we're going to be adversely affected? And they didn't let, think about that. The, what well, was the rush with the contract? The contract, what I call a rush to nothing. What was the rush to the contract for? What was it for? What did we get? We was in no rush. Talk about transparency. They didn't tell us nothing. They didn't mention congestion pricing. They didn't say congestion pricing was going to be a burn tail. What they did was use their manipulation to say on their website, TW Local on website, that they was going to fight the Taylor Law. We ain't heard nothing about that again, right? Who knows what they're going to concoct doing what kind of fake promises and lies they're going to tell us going towards the next election when they try to utilize you for True Squad, their propaganda machine, to diminish all the candidates, which I believe is against the law. Congestion prices. Give us a break. You fought. You fought. You don't fight for nothing. Y'all don't fight. What do y'all fight for? What do y'all stand for? What is this union about? What? What they say I got there? A union is an organization formed by workers who join together and use their strength to have a voice in their workplace. Through their union, workers have the ability to negotiate from a position of strength. Our position of strength that we was going to get more work. And this union did nothing for that. 
Nothing, God, there's nothing. In addition to getting us nothing for COVID, what kind of union we got? Ask yourself, you folks who grabbed, who hugged this union. The union can't do this. ain't the union of your grandfather. This ain't the union of your father. That was men. They have principles. Housing, social justice, a living wage meant something to them. They never cow down to management. They never will put up a one DA when there's five DZ, when there's five boroughs. They never would have did that. They never would have hit Libra without hitting Davy. They never would have hit de Blasio without hitting Adams. They was always quiet. They never would have kowtow. This year was always quiet with Como. We never kowtow to politicians. That's the complete opposite. This is where we at. Am I lying? And be truthful with yourself, you supporters of this regime. Be truthful about what I'm saying. Acknowledge that. Through their union works have the ability to negotiate from a position of straight where employers are wages, benefit, workplace health, and safety. And Aetna. I got on my log in NYU. I got something that I owe them $700. How's that? I got a $15 copay. Aetna. I got secondary insurance with my wife's insurance, but she ain't my primary. I don't use her. And even, they say, you got to go with Blue Cross Blue Shield, right? I would still have to pay that. If I made my wife my primary, I would still have to pay that. What's going on with Aetna? That's another stress we got to deal with. In addition, all this we got to deal with. Our safety, these bullying managers, the discipline, this fake union, our safety, our health. And now, Aetna, we got to go with that. God help you, like I said, our brothers and sisters who retired, who, who sacrificed and lost and worked in COVID and got nothing. They got nothing. All they got is inferior health care. And now Aetna, Aetna is playing games. Aetna is playing games like transit is playing games with our comp. Our brothers and sisters are starving. And this is how city is they are. Transit will rather pay you. They owe you six months. You don't get that six months when you come back to work. You ain't going to be able to convalesce and get help and get your therapy. No, come back to work. I, I and me says so. That was transparency. Nobody knew nothing about the Corvell Corporation. They was too busy going around talking about car night. They're too busy about talking about we're going to be giving dinner here and there. Where's the transparency Gomez was talking about? Where is it? Where's their transparency? They rolled up their sleeve and said during the contract negotiation, negotiation this is where we at, folks. Transit trying to do this, they trying to do that. They came back with the transit trying to get rid of the conductors. They've been trying to get rid of the conductors since the 60s. Truth by omission, they liars. Transit wanted to do this and transit wanted to did that. That was generic smoke and mirrors. What does this union, if this union is so great, how are we so disappointed in them? How's the union so despised if they doing such a great job? It's just me? It's just progressive action? It's just Nook? It's just Jason? It's just Alvarez? I mean, Martinez? It's Ben? Is it Jamal? It's Kemp? It's just us? We now Kemp's an officer. I admit Ken got a job to do. I admit Ken. I don't admit. He's also awesome. I'm gonna keep him out of this. But all the folks, you go in every crew room, you got folks that are about to retire, right? And they used to do their goodbye tour. You know what they do now? It's like a prisoner. You know how they do? They on the wall. They put that X one day, one more day. When all they do is counting down the days like a prisoner in the final days of their bid when they can leave. There's no joy. It's just people want to leave. All these folks that used to say, yo, I'm going to stay a few years. I had people already. I know you all have too. I'm going to stay another year or two, pay off this, my son's wish. I want to pay off this house first. They're, I'm leaving. 
I can't take it. New folks are coming here. They ain't putting up with this. I'm talking about for these Gen Z. They're not putting up with it. They don't read supply encyclopedias. They don't look at one ads. They don't look at magazines. They got this information coming to them a million miles a minute. They take 20 grand less for some peace of mind. They see this, this despicable work environment with a fake EEO. With no accountability for the manager. They see that. They see how they, they see that nothing, these, the riding these trains and buses and out there on their own. Survival of the fittest mentality we got to have. Fight the fight and we fight, we abandon our jobs. And we fight, they taking us for discipline. We between the rock and the hard place. Oh, goddamn. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Let me finish reading this. Through their union, workers have the ability to negotiate. Not here. From position of strength, we have none. And employees owe wages and benefits. They're trying to mess with our benefits. With Aetna. Workplace health, we have none. Safety, absolutely have none. Job training and other work-related issues. Unions also serve as an important role, making sure that management acts fairly and treats these workers with respect. That's what's happening here. Uh, uh, is the TW Local 100 living up to that? Are they? No, ashes. Are they? Is it just is it just progressive action? Is it just the rest of these folks, Evangeline, and the rest of these fighters, and, and who are making it up? And I said, Evangeline, it ain't too many fighters out there. And we'll talk about that briefly in a minute. So, brothers and sisters... We got to come together and fight. They only going to do to us what we accept. They only going to give us what we are willing to fight for. And I and thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Folks calling and checking up on me. The, the DM, everything. Thank you. But I'm saying this. We need more than them, you know, in the hearts and the thumbs up. And fight, brother. We need you there. We need bodies. That ain't doing it. That Facebook love ain't enough. I'm sorry. It ain't. Y'all got choice to make. We got to fight. This country is about fight. For what's right in the democracy. That discipline with this union. Everywhere. And we got these folks that will rather, unfortunately... We got the influx of oh, decent folks coming in, but they didn't go through the way we came here, the way your grandfathers and grandmothers came here. We got folks, what's up, brother, that are circumventing the law to come here, and we got politicians who are enabling them. We got folks who've been waiting for housing for years who now can't get housing. We got folks living hand to mouth and migrants are coming here looking for a better life and opportunity, but they got debit cards. They in hotel rooms. And we got brought we got off we got folks here that are freezing. And I don't know what other way to say it. And those influx of migrants are also now on our train. They are the folks that will assault us and are assaulting us and who will tell us they're not getting off this bus and we're not getting off the train. What you going to do about it? We the ones that are suffering and the working class. I just heard that billionaires pay 8% tax. How much of tax is we paying? 8% billionaires pay, we pay more tax than billionaires. Our union is not talking about that. Our union don't care we house. Our union don't care that we're forced to leave the city we love. The birth where we was born, where our kids was born, and we have to leave because we can't afford it. The first generation in the history of this country who can't afford to live, can't afford to live where they work. And folks come here and get instant housing. How's that right? 
How we got to get in the one in a million lottery? We either don't make enough or we make too much. What? What's happening to the working class? What happened to unions fighting for us? At all costs, with no limits. What happened? What happened? And let me say this before I go. I hope I made some sense. Like my son say, um, um, chew the, the meat and spit out the bones. I hope. Somebody asked me about Cordero. And let me say this about Cordero. I will vote for Richie Davis before Cordero. That's me. That's me. Things are going to come out. That's me. I don't speak for progressive action. I'm speaking for Chris Drummond. No, I don't think. No, I don't support him for president. No. And you folks who talk about like Toussaint was the same. Toussaint had his moment. Toussaint was much as a tyrant as anybody. Stop with the nostalgia. He was as much as tyrant as a power corrupts absolutely. He tried to get, I talked about that in another show. He tried to make his officers' lives a living hell. So stop. Do I got issue with the contract? Seem like good. The wage part seemed good to me. I heard for a fleeting moment. He was protecting everybody. He had membership doing what they were supposed to. He had management doing what they supposed to do. And had his officers on point. But he lost his way too. So stop. Stop. And these slates running. This is me. I'm going to hold everybody accountable. I believe. That Tremel, yeah, you want something done right? Do it yourself, Tremel. Do it yourself. I don't think Tremel has got one thing about him. You want to say his ego and all his flaws? His fight is real. You think I go weeks and I don't speak to him sometimes? He pissed me off. But it's not personal. As far as that goes, it has nothing to do. I don't let the personal whatever get in the way. Of who going to do the best job. Because it's about you. It's always been about you with me. And I ain't going to let nobody who I feel these slates. And let me be clear. There are folks. Who just trying to stay on the radar. They don't want no beef with Stan United. They don't like Richie Davis. They don't agree with anything going on. They just trying to do their job. That's what I liked about Utano. So I try. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I made efforts not to get at you, Tom. You know why? The time on you, Tom, let me do my job. Eric didn't, but you, Tom, did. I remember going up to his office and talk to him. He didn't say a word about Tremel progressive action. I would go to board meeting and address myself as a member of progressive action and an officer of TW Local 100. They didn't like that. You, never. He let me be. He recognized who I was at the officer. A lot of them. So when they say drum this and that, and drum was all that, Canelo called me and asked me. I never told you that. Did I want to be his conductor chair? I said, no. I didn't care about that. No. My principles mean nothing. So I must have been doing something. Right. He always called me. They got, I won't say who it was, but they came. I got witnesses. They came want to have a meeting with me about running with them. They knew who I was. They knew my value. So try to discredit me if you want. I can pull out more names. I won't. That ain't my style. But that's not what's going on right now. And, and my point is, this is my point. I lost my train of thought. There are officers on the standing out of the slates that are good officers. There's some officers in certain departments that no, no. Some of these folks running are not better officers, and I'm going. We got some pathetic officers in Staten Island. Bunch of no, none of these guys stand up for themselves. But you got folks that can't be replaced, and then you come on these slates. In the time I've been here, in the eight years I've been here, my time as an officer, the last two and a half years, you've done nothing 
talking about publicly fighting are stepping up for members. Now you want the office? Now you want to run for office? You're not getting away with that. I'm going to let them. Our, progressive action is running RTO. Most of progressive action. Hope on Martinez do something to Buses. But most, we all, no, we all brothers and sisters. We all, I go to structure. I go to MOW, MOW, I go to MOW. I go to buses. I go, see, I go anywhere around the system. We're all brothers. And speak about what ails us. I want, our goal should be to have the best union possible. No matter who, I was more than willing to work with anybody. But if the members are not my, the priority and right, us be, Tremel always reference, you know, our history in this country, our, our oppression and things that affect us. He say that because it's allegous to what's going on with white folks, what's going on with Asians, our Latino brothers, our Muslim brothers, and um, blessings for Ramadan. Happy Ramadan to our brothers and sisters. So he referenced that as a means to make the comparison and to Asians and Latinos and whites, Guyanese, Russians, Bengali, and any, any the, 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 the Albanian. You're the N-word here. You're the N-word. That's what he's telling y'all. That that histor historically... And let's say class. Take the color out of it. The working class is taking... This is a class thing. Davy, in a few years, will be gone. He will have a job somewhere else. But probably a prestigious job. Same thing for Jan Libra. And a lot of those folks on the boards, they have jobs like that now. We will still be here catching hell. We will still be here. And when I say class, they don't relate to us. When they say we shouldn't be a stand down, they cannot relate to us. When they say I've been assured that there won't be no more problems from the union, they do not relate to us. So when they put that sh social media policy, we're supposed to shut up. See the correlation? When, when TW say we can't use their logo, we can't do this, we can't violate bylaws and all that. They supposed, that's supposed to shut us up. Two peas in the pot. An incestuous relationship. But let's get back to the election. I'm not going for it. There's fighters here. There's folks. I talked to a brother the other day. He said, I said, yo, bro, you should run. He said, Drummond, I don't want to disappoint nobody. Brother, I don't. I want to run. And he's a fighter. He advocates for himself. He's smart. Everything you need, he cares. Everything you need in the rap. He said, I don't want to let nobody down. I told him, the fact that you don't let you don't want to let anybody down will keep you from letting anybody down. Another brother, I see you, brother. He's watching. Yeah, brother, we're gonna do it, my man. We're gonna do it. We had that conversation last week. And being treated unfairly, I made that too. It's crazy. And um, there's brothers that say, yo, I can't do it, bro. I got too much going on. I got two, I got young kids. I, I respect that. Not folks that say, I want, I want to, I talk to somebody say, I want to run with the union, but ain't nothing going to change. If you feel that way, no, you're not an officer. If you think this is just about you having more free time for your pay, personal life and your family obligation, this is not for you. If you think going along to get along is the way, just so you ain't at your tools, this, that's not, that's not pure of heart. And Tremel for all this for, I will be on the phone, Canella, Eric. Who ain't been on the phone with Tremel for hours talking about how to change this system? What we need to do. Ben, what strategies we need to enact to change things down here. And I see very few people do that here. That's what it's about. It ain't about my like. It's about his fight. It ain't about that he wants to change things down here. He don't like this disrespect. 
They treat us like dogs. I'm not letting them treat me. They, 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 we worked too hard. We died. We have a lower mortality rate. That Mac is filled with folks with high blood pressure who never had high blood pressure. I ain't got to say disrespect from them clowns at the Mac, you fake doctors, you quacks. Sending people back to the road who should not be on the road. For the gain share. Employee availability. So, that's what I had to say today. These slates, yeah, it's no different. I'm going to make sure, and I'm going to tell you, brothers, and you know what? When Tramel say something, that brother earned the right to say what he says. He's fighting for his job. He's fighting for his job after he had his leg broke at Bedford Park. After the president, you, you his words, the president's indicting words saying Tramel threw a punch was used against him in arbitration. After, and I'm telling you how it worked. Social media policy, they call you right down. They don't call you down two years later like they're doing with your mouth. They are changing the rules. They want that brother gone. Why? Why? I know sometimes he hit a grape with a sledgehammer. I know sometimes he go hard. But he's fine. How many things he's uncovered? Fearlessly uncovered. Then enlighten us. He's the only one I know that came down there in the arbitration. Somebody was going to get fired and save their job. He's the only one I kept with the fruit. Come down there fearless. Some of these fighters shaking like a cartoon when they had two Broadway. So-called fighters. I've seen it. And that's all right. But I'm not going to let no frauds. And let me say this. Y'all take it the way that you want to take it. If I don't believe anybody... Is any better than Richie Davis? I will just, we just gonna keep fighting Richie Davis. Till somebody come along. And you folks, get your message. Y'all come to progressive, progressive action. I'm salty about that. I don't like people swagger jacking. Taking things we say, then twisting it like it's yours. Everybody's held accountable. Everybody's held accountable. Tremel will be held accountable as VP. These folks running. Pretending like they're doing this and doing that. Some folks are running them bang folks in too. I'm sure that will manifest itself. All of a sudden, six months in, you're fighters now. All of a sudden, we a priority. I'm not fronting. I don't care. I'm fighting for the membership. I'm fighting for what's right. Always have, always will. Everybody be safe. Take care.